Is this budget gaming laptop a good choice to play popular multiplayer as well as the latest AAA single player games? Let's find out. Additionally, I'll tell you 5 things I don't like and 3 things I do like about the MSI GF63 laptop after spending one month with it. But before that, cdkeyoffer.com has been my favorite trusted seller of affordable Windows 10 Pro OEM keys for over 3 years now. They're currently running a Black Friday sale on all Microsoft software. Use discount code IVADIM to get 25% off and bring the Windows 10 Pro price down to just $16. Then securely check out with PayPal or another payment method. The key is delivered instantly, so you can activate it and upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you wish to do so. Microsoft Office 2019 and 2021 Pro are also on sale with a discount code IVADIM. Grab them now while the Black Friday sale is on. In terms of specifications, the MSI GF63 is equipped with an RTX 4050 graphics card, an 8-core 12th generation i5 Intel processor, 8GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD storage. The display is a 15.6-inch 1080p 144Hz IPS panel. This thing weighs almost 1.9 kilograms, and it comes with a 120W charger. There are three things I like about this laptop and five things that I dislike about it. Let's start with the bad ones first. Uh, well, you may have spotted from the get-go that this laptop is pretty much a fingerprint magnet. Yes, it attracts a lot of hand grease. Just take a look at those spots. Yeah, this is after a couple of weeks of use, um, but I'll tell you now, it might as well be in a couple of days because I just couldn't be bothered to clean it every day or every other day. Over here as well, where the power button is, up top, basically everywhere your hands go, it will leave marks. Number two, the trackpad is offset to the left, so I'm a right-handed person, as the most people on earth are. So why don't we just keep it in the center, like civilized people? Yeah, not cool. Thing number three is this sticker's location. They could have put them here, where your hand is not going to touch them, but they put them in probably the worst place possible, because when you're gaming, you're using your WASD keys over here, and the palm of your hand actually rubs these stickers, and they've got some pretty nasty edges, so that's just irritating the palm of my hand. Not pleasant at all. Annoying thing number four, this is just a little bit of foreshadowing, but there are some gaps between the metal bit and the plastic bit over here. Let me just try and get as close as I can to show you. You see that little gap, yeah? It runs all around, all around here. So eventually all kinds of gunk and dust will build up in here and it will be a pain to clean. And thing number five is that this laptop has just eight gigabytes of RAM, which is unfortunate because uh, some games do require more memory. Now let's talk about three things that I do like. Number one is good connectivity. This laptop has plenty of ports for a budget laptop. It has one USB type A here, another two USB type A on this side, as well as USB type C, which doubles as a display port, so you can connect your monitor easily, as well as HDMI at the back for monitor connections. And of course, your uh, headphone jack and microphone as well as the one gigabit LAN port. Good thing number two is this trackpad. For a budget laptop, this is actually a quite decent trackpad. It didn't annoy me as much as I thought it would because I come from using MacBooks with perfect trackpads. Of course, this one does not compare even close to MacBook trackpads, but it wasn't a pain to use and that says a lot. Thing number three is the 144Hz display. 
yeah it actually feels very nice when you are gaming and you can get higher frame rates it is super smooth and well worth it first thing i'd like to do is to check if uh, the performance on this laptop will be any different you know between when we are running off of the power cable versus when the laptop is on battery alone let's check it out it's plugged in now so let's take a look at what kind of performance we are going to get in cyberpunk benchmark let's go yeah the performance is pretty good it's a 1080p medium preset above 50 fps so far okay so the average fps is 58 so let's uh, unplug this bad boy and yeah so that's power gone it is on battery now well, let's test this again run benchmark all on safe progress okay we haven't done anything and right from the start I can see that the performance is uh, definitely affected where we've seen 50 plus FPS now we are seeing the FPS hover around 40 so there is definitely a considerable hit to the performance when you run your games well not games but any workload basically on battery only so the battery cannot power the GPU and the CPU properly uh, but that's that's what it is on uh, pretty much all of the Windows laptops I've seen so far it's only MacBooks that are you know staying at full power capacity they, they just they just don't care MacBooks they don't care they perform the same on battery and when plugged in that's a good thing about them there we go that's 44 FPS so that's like what uh, 14 yeah 14 FPS we've lost just by running this game off of the battery that's significant let's test the difference between these user scenarios so we've got silent balanced and extreme performance and most importantly I am curious to find out uh, what the difference in the noise level from the fan will be because on this laptop there's just one fan that cools the CPU and the GPU both of them it is located right here there is a vent here and there is a vent at the back as well so uh, that's where the air is exhausted from these two exhaust holes let's check it out we are starting with the silent mode and the test will be done in uh, the cyberpunk 2077 1080p everything set to high so let's run the benchmark already hear the fans slightly ramping up but it's not too bad i mean this is actually well it's not silent but it is reasonably quiet i would definitely be able to just play the game and uh, not use headphones at this noise level have a look at the performance above 50 fps gpu is hovering around 30 35 watts and the cpu is around 20 yeah 20 ish 60 to 64 degrees on the cpu and about 61 degrees on the gpu and the benchmark is done we've got 47 fps average let's switch to the balanced user scenario the fans are noticeably louder already so we haven't even entered the benchmark yet and the fans have already ramped up there we go right off the bat i can see that the gpu power has increased and the cpu power as well so 
This mode actually allows more power to the CPU and the GPU for more performance at the cost of louder noise. Check it out. The CPU is running a bit hotter and the GPU is running a bit hotter as well. But these temperatures are not are not too high, so that's fine. That is absolutely fine. We're, we're almost done with the benchmark, and there we go. That's 40, well, almost 50 FPS. We can round that up to 50, so we're getting, like, what, extra 3 FPS? Well, 2.5, 3 FPS on average, just by using balanced mode and having the fan work a bit harder. Let's uh, switch it to the extreme performance. Oh, the fan noise is getting really loud. I would say that it's close to obnoxiously loud at the point where I wouldn't even consider using it, the laptop like this because, yeah, even uh, if you've got headphones, you're still going to hear that noise. Check it out. Although the temperatures are... Uh, I think they're better than on balanced. But even on balanced, uh, the fan noise wasn't too bad, actually. You could still, like, play a game without headphones. It wouldn't be as enjoyable as on silent mode. Uh, at this noise level, I would not want to play a game with this fan noise. And we're almost done. Huh. Okay, so we've got almost the same performance as on balanced but the fan noise is way louder. Yeah. I would say that using extreme performance mode is not worth it. So we're playing Call of Duty Warzone. Let's have a look at uh, the graphics settings that the game has uh, recommended us, because I chose performance preference. And here is what the game came up with. 1080p, NVIDIA DLSS set to quality, and the rest is, well, pretty much low or normal. A lot of things turned off. Yeah. Let's see if it is playable. I haven't played Warzone in forever. <laughs> it used to be one of my favorite games, but I do prefer single-player games nowadays. Just, you know, enjoy the story. Too much time needed to stay up to date with all of the latest metas and whatnot uh, when you play these kind of games. I just don't have the time. Well, have a look at this. Yeah, I mean... It is not perfect, it is not quite 60 FPS, but I can play like this, no problem. Oh. Should I push? Should I wait and see what happens? Oh. I think they left. I'm outnumbered here. Two, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> I need some practice. But um, as you can see, it is pretty much playable. Although you have to rely on DLSS to get at least 50 plus FPS. So, yeah. Uh, this is not the greatest setup for Warzone and I would definitely recommend going uh, with something a bit uh, 
more powerful than the RTX 4050 and especially like the 8 gigabytes of memory. It's not enough to enjoy this kind of game. Starfield is one of those games that I didn't think this laptop would be able to run because uh, system requirements uh, are calling for a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. This laptop has just 8 gigs. So I'm actually pleased to report that this game is very playable on this laptop. So right off the bat I will show you what's like the worst case scenario you can expect. As you can see we are getting some stutters once we load into the city but mostly the experience is absolutely fine. So we are uh, using 1080p however Mm, the graphics preset is set to medium. It says custom just because I've turned off motion blur. I hate it. And um, I've enabled DLSS, quality, and frame generation. I've played this game over four hours using these settings. And uh, I've turned on other settings, turned off certain things, frame generation off and on, uh, DLSS off and on. I've tested it all. And I came to the conclusion that this is the way to play this game. Frame generation on, DLSS on quality, medium preset. And with these settings, the game looks good and performs absolutely fine. Um, as I mentioned, we are getting some stutters once we are in the city. But I'll show you another scenario where we are on a mission. And the performance there is completely different, much smoother. Just for the sake of it, let me turn off frame generation and show you what that looks like. So it's off and upscaling off. Check it out. We're getting 30 plus FPS. And yeah, this is not the way to play this game. The picture looks choppy due to low FPS. Not pleasant at all. I'll be honest with you, uh, going into testing frame generation for the first time in my life, I had low expectations. I thought that it will suck because I've seen uh, a lot of reports and just, you know, comparisons online on YouTube. Basically, most of them say that frame generation is just not as good. But I'll be honest with you, I've been running around for several hours in this game as well as in uh, Cyberpunk and I can tell you now that it's fine. And here's what the performance is like when you're on a mission, exploring, buildings and whatnot. Yeah, as you can see, this, there are spikes sometimes, but I've just loaded into this level. So most of the time, as you can see, I'm just running around and uh, the frame time chart stays relatively flat, which we want to see. Looks good. And the performance over 100 FPS, <laughs> uh, sometimes like 90, 80, but it's always above 60. This is with frame generation enabled. I am impressed. I'm impressed that this game runs on an 8 gigabyte RAM laptop. And I'm also impressed that frame generation works so well. Uh, even like for 1080p resolution with DLSS enabled, it works well. That's where it shines. That's where the technology like that shines, is when you have a less than ideal GPU um, you can't really afford to run games at native resolution with decent frame rate and you enable frame generation and you just enjoy the game because even though you are making some trade-offs in terms of like picture quality it is well worth it because I'll be honest with you on this 15 inch screen I don't see I don't I just don't see it all I see is just smooth gameplay and I am enjoying it.
let's play some Apex Legends next. As for the settings, I opted to go for like the performance style to maximize the FPS. So here they are. Streaming texture is high. Everything else is uh, either turned off or on low. Okay, let's go. From what I understand in this game, this is like uh, the most intense part. And um, yeah, we're still getting above 100 FPS, which is good. It is um, giving me hope that uh, we are going to see some very high and consistent frame rates, which is key to winning matches in this type of games. I don't play this game, so don't expect too much from me. Let's take that. Sniper is always nice. Yeah, the FPS looks pretty good. We are managing to stay above 100 so far. We're gonna get into some team fights. There we go. Hold up a second. Where's it coming from? There we go, one down. Two down. I'm almost out of ammo. Oh, <laughs> I should have not gone for that kill. <laughs> should have uh, should have killed the, the last remaining guy. Well, that was stupid of me, but yeah, I got greedy. I wanted at least one kill, and I got one kill, so that's good. Yeah, it's pretty nice, so you can play this game uh, pretty consistently with a high frame rates. Very nice. This is Cyberpunk 2077. Allow me to show you. So obviously it's a 1080p monitor, so 1080p resolution. And I've set the uh, graphics preset to medium. It says custom because I've turned off uh, film grain and uh, motion blur, but everything else is set to the original medium preset quality, ray tracing off. And I found that this game is best played with DLSS on quality, uh, frame generation enabled. And check it out. Indeed, the gameplay is smooth, the picture quality is absolutely fine, and we are getting, for the most part, above 80 FPS. This area right here is one of the most demanding scenes that you can find in the game, so there you go. It performs beautifully. And uh, I'm actually surprised to see that the game runs so well because uh, the minimum requirements for Cyberpunk 2077 version 2.0 and uh, higher uh, is now a minimum of 12 gigabytes of RAM and this laptop has just 8 so we are 4 gigabytes short and because of that you will see some stutters here and there um, well at least I believe that's why due to the lack of memory most likely uh, but I haven't seen any missing textures or anything like that but if you are absolutely against frame generation let me show you how that looks like so turn it off turn off uh, DLSS and here we go this is the performance you will get on this laptop I would not call it uh, enjoyable, I mean sometimes the FPS drops to below 40, so um, although it is playable, very much playable, it is not as enjoyable as with frame generation, uh, so yeah definitely I recommend turning that on, because it just looks better. Let's uh, switch it back on and then go for a little ride in the car. Sometimes you have to enable it twice to, for it to work because it's some, for some reason it just dropped it down to auto automatically. So you, you want to make sure that you reselect it and reapply it again. Let's jump into the car. 
and have a look how that one goes because um, with these frame generation and upscaling technologies the main problems appear when you are moving fast in a car and uh, I am pretty sure that if we record some footage and then do something like 200% uh, zoom and then start slowing fo the footage down we will find a lot of problems here and there uh, with the image quality however when you're just enjoying the game when you're just driving around walking around running around doing your missions and not pixel peeping at least for my eyes I am enjoying the gameplay a lot more when the FPS is high and you can see the image quality is absolutely fine instead of like playing at 40 FPS with uh, with choppy frame rates that is my personal preference let me know what you think in the comments below uh, are you the same or are you absolutely against frame generation Hogwarts Legacy is the first game where I've ran into problems uh, due to low memory capacity and um, yeah I'm going to show you what kind of problems in just a moment but first I'd like to begin with showing you uh, the settings for the graphics that I've basically tested and found that this is the best kind of settings that you can use to have somewhat playable experience in this game although not all of you will consider it playable but this is basically the best we can do with this laptop right here with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 6 gigabytes of video memory yeah it's 1080p and you have to use DLSS I've set it to quality and sharpening is just uh, 0.1 Nvidia reflex is on and in terms of uh, graphics options you have to use low preset I mean and you can forget about ray tracing obviously but yeah anything above low uh, it it is absolutely unplayable is just uh, there's just too many stutters if you select anything above low and check this out uh, basically you are in the game everything's fine yeah however I want to show you something when we turn that's when you can see the problems appear check out have you seen that smoke from chimneys that black smoke yeah uh, have a look at that it's there right now and the birds appear and the smoke is not there and then it appears and I will show you again it's not there and then it appears so yeah uh, this is basically the issue um, some of the textures they do look weird uh, which basically means that they're not loading in properly sometimes we are experiencing uh, stuttering and basically the FPS is okay as you can see uh, this GPU actually has the processing capabilities um, you know the good enough processing capabilities to actually render everything and run this game at an appropriate frame rate however due to the lack of memory uh, we are experiencing stuttering and most likely FPS lower than it would have been if we had enough memory I'd like to remind you that this game indeed requires 16 gigabytes of RAM uh, that's minimum specifications uh, required and this laptop only has 8 gigabytes of RAM yeah so <laughs> that's not great but at least I mean we have some stuttering however the game is still somewhat playable I mean I've played it like this uh, for the past hour or so 
because I was just trying to figure out what the best settings are and uh, using these settings that I've showed you just now it is somewhat playable. Let's get into a fight and see how the game performs then because I have my suspicions. There we go, fight coming up. Oh, that was a huge stutter right there. Okay. Yeah, stutters galore. Oh, use ancient magic, okay, let's do that. Boom, massive stutter, so... Even watching cutscenes is not extremely pleasant, I would say, because of these stutters. They, they happen during cutscenes, they happen during fights and just walking around. Yeah, the experience is not great. Yeah, going forward, I would definitely say that uh, this uh, RTX 4050 laptop or any other RTX 4050 laptops for that matter, they will not do the job. You will have to get more memory because uh, technologies such as frame generation they will help you boost your fps if it is uh, not like perfectly fine for example you can boost it from 40 fps uh, up to 60 or 70 that is absolutely fine in the game that works fine with the memory capacity that you have however if the memory capacity you have which is in this case six gigabytes is not enough then you can you cannot do anything about it. There is just no workaround. The game will be unplayable or barely playable, like in this case. And here's what the performance is like inside of the castle. Uh, yeah, as you can see, this door, textures on it have just appeared <laughs> when I when I walked closer to it. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. They just popped into existence again. Let's see if we can recreate that uh, effect again. There we go. No texture, no texture, and then boom. It uh, kind of appeared. All right, let's, uh, let's just uh, run around a little bit more to see if we spot any other oddities. As you can see, the game is still stuttering quite a bit. It is not smooth at all. You know, you, you will continue experiencing these stutters when you walk and explore this castle. So yeah, there is uh, nothing really you can do about that. There are no settings you can lower to make it better. That is a shame. My conclusion for this game on this device is that I will not continue playing it like that because it's just not a pleasant experience. It takes away from the this amazing game that I would like to experience in its full glory. We are at 1080p. I am going to limit the FPS to 144 FPS because that's the refresh of this monitor. There is no reason to, you know, let the GPU or CPU to work any harder than it needs to. As for the graphics quality, I'm running very high textures. I did not want to download ultra textures because, in my opinion, they are pointless in this game. Everything else is maxed out. I've got some things turned off, such as lens flare and uh, zoom in depth of field, because those things are just annoying. As well as I've put a render scaling to 100% to get a very nice image of true 1080p gaming. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, the gameplay is very smooth, over 100 FPS. You definitely want to play this type of game with headset on, because, yeah. I can't, uh, using these speakers, built-in speakers, I can't really hear where the sounds are coming from, so... Oh, there we go. <laughs> I got one. <laughs> that was surprising. Yeah, I'll watch it. Don't worry, mate. I'll watch this door. Oh. Yeah, look at that, one around. 
surprising, surprising. That's enough of Rainbow Six Siege. I can tell that this game runs pretty well. Yeah, let's move on to the next one. Next up is God of War. And uh, I've set the graphics preset to high. And I've selected DLSS quality. Let's have a look. Yeah. I am targeting 60 plus FPS in this game. Even though it's not the most demanding game, but it does look gorgeous. I think that uh, most of the time, um, you know, to get a good looking game, you don't necessarily have to introduce all of the latest features and technologies. It's about, you know, the little details and the way you place the assets, like building a forest. Anyone can place a lot of trees randomly, but to make it look good, you have to place them strategically. NVIDIA's DLSS and frame generation technologies do appear to be like the saving grace for this laptop with its RTX 4050. It's, um, it's not the most advanced graphics card. So it does require a little bit of help from software to be able to play these kind of games. Like, you know, it is a gorgeous game. On a 50 class GPU, we never used to be able to play games on high or very high presets at 1080p. But nowadays, RTX 4050, it is possible thanks to DLSS. There is no frame generation in this game though. Oh, Kratos caught him lacking. <laughs> he was crying. And Kratos was about to smack that boy. There's just too much testosterone in this man. Step aside, boy. I'm going to take care of this. Wow, indeed. Yeah, it appears that we are able to achieve that almost stable 60 FPS in fights, but I'm pretty sure there will be some uh, areas where where the FPS will drop below that. Oh, there we go, 55. Let me try something. Let's lower the settings to original, down to original, and have a look like what, what that's gonna feel like. Um, Okay, yeah, so the FPS is definitely better. And I wonder now if we disable DLSS just for the sake of it, just to show you uh, what the performance looks like on native resolution. This is original preset and no upscaling. There we go. Yeah, so basically if you don't like upscalers, uh, you still can play this game at native resolution, 1080p, uh, no problem. You just have to use the original graphics preset, which uh, by the sound of it, it means that um, that will be like the original quality of the game on uh, PlayStation. It looks very good. So if I had to play the game like that, I would not be unhappy in any sense or form. It looks good. It feels good. Awesome. This is PUBG. For the game settings, I chose uh, medium preset, uh, DX11 enhanced, and obviously 1080p. But what I am not happy with is the stuttering. was uh, below 30 FPS just then. Yeah, when you're looking over a town, sometimes you get very horrible performance dips, like this one here, 44 FPS. Uh, that is not acceptable for this type of game. But yeah, that is pretty much it. Uh, this game is playable, although I am not a big fan of the fact that sometimes when you're near towns, the FPS drops quite significantly. 
In CS2, I'd like to start the test with the high preset and see, you know, how it does. And uh, maybe we'll drop it down to medium after that. Even on the high preset, on the high graphics preset, it's pretty good. I mean, it stays above 60 FPS as far as I've noticed. Uh, most of the time it's just like... 90 plus. Well, not right now it's 75. So there are times when the FPS drops. But at least with the high preset, I can see everything clearly. Let's switch to medium. Okay, so we are on medium preset right now, and I can tell you right away. I don't like it. The picture quality is not as good. Everything is a lot more pixelated, and I can't really see the difference in performance all that much. It is still hovering at around 80 to 90 FPS, so we're not getting a huge performance gain, but the drop in uh, the image quality is massive. But the overall experience is pretty good. CS2 is another perfect game for this laptop. This is Fortnite. Um, I don't know this game very well, and that is why um, I've spent some time trying to figure out what's going on with the settings, because I still get stutters from time to time, which is unfortunate, but uh, these are the settings. Basically, medium quality, AA is NVIDIA DLSS quality, yeah, I can't get rid of those stutters. You see? <laughs> There's so many right there. And you could see it on the screen as well. Let's try low settings. Let's apply. I'd like to get closer to 144. Oh, this is much nicer. I can see everything clearly now. You know what? <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna play it on low from now on because previously I couldn't see much oh, oh, oh. I'm still experiencing those stutters yeah I can't seem to get rid of them oh there was the big one just then where's this guy you see those Massive stutters! No! My god. And that is the reason you don't want the game stuttering. It was just so much harder to get that kill. This is The Witcher 3. High graphics preset. Ray tracing off. AA is DLSS quality. And the rest is as per the high preset. Uh, the only things I have disabled was blur and motion blur because I just don't like those things. There we go. Everything is high. I've seen FPS dip below 60 then. In more demanding scenes, it's gonna drop well below 60. For example, if we enter the forest, uh, that should be pretty intensive for the graphics card. So let's check it out. Oh, check out the water. Looks good. Ooh. There we go. Let's fight. The FPS dropped below 60 then. Let's try something else. Let's enable frame generation. Let's turn that on. How many more frames can we get? Yeah. It seems decent. 80 plus FPS. No, you're not gonna do that. Yeah, I think I would give it a go. Playing this game with frame generation enabled. It looks fine to me. For now. And the performance is much better. I can feel the gameplay is smoother. The picture is smoother because this is a 144 hertz display, so you can really 
take advantage of uh, uh, those higher frames even though they are fake frames and there is extra input lag but uh, when the original FPS is close to 60 I personally do not notice any additional input lag in this sort of game I probably feel it in something like Counter-Strike or something but this is not the fastest paced game out there so it's fine you can enjoy The Witcher 3 on this laptop no problems it works absolutely beautiful time for some final thoughts yeah this MSI GF63 laptop actually surprised me because I did not expect that uh, a laptop that is limited by 8 gigabytes of RAM is going to play some of the uh, latest AAA games so well but um, you know in terms of the graphics card performance uh, it is saved only by the frame generation technology if it wasn't there this laptop would be useless for AAA gaming also I feel like the screen is just a little bit too dim I would have liked to get another 50 nits of brightness on there but that's just my personal preference overall this laptop is most suited to play some of the simpler multiplayer games online games or indie games because going forward it is pretty much impossible to guarantee that future AAA games will work because even some of the current games don't work properly on this thing if you're on a tight budget then this configuration is actually decent however if you do have some extra money if you can spend a little bit more then I would definitely recommend going for more RAM and an RTX 4060 graphics card instead of the 4050 because that will actually allow you to play the latest AAA games consistently and you know that you are going to be covered for the next couple of years at least that is it from me I hope you enjoyed this video give it a like if you did and subscribe for more if you haven't already it was I Vadim doing my first laptop review.